there was the perception that the uh, the response from Republicans wasn't overly enthusiastic. Well, I would say that this State of the Union address was muted from both sides relative to some that I've seen in the past. Some of that may be the nostalgia that goes with the last address. Some of it may have been, you know, it wasn't as much of a single item laundry list as you see with some State of the Union's address, because it's oftentimes those single items that, you know, draw or solicit response because that's the one thing these 15 House or Senate member, uh, members might be pushing for or particular advocates of. Well, was there anything that you particularly liked about it? Um, I, you know, I liked the way that he was forward-looking and talked about the reality of how every American, irregardless of party, irregardless of race, irregardless of perspective, has got to look to the future with a degree of optimism and hope and uh, to welcome it, not, not to, to run from it. I think that the flip side of globalization is fear. And we see that in some of the, uh, the, the, you know, the current debates before us, whether on the Democratic or Republican side. What most bothered you about his remarks? That he didn't talk about the national debt. You know, the national debt has gone from 10 to $20 trillion, in essence, over the course of his eight years. I think that that makes every one of us as Americans less secure from a financial standpoint. I think it opens up the threat to future inflation, to a, a, a falling value of the dollar, an erosion of everything that you or I may have saved over the course of our lives, and more importantly, what Americans would have saved over the course of their lives. So there really wasn't a conversation about, yeah, I have a laundry list of wants, some of which I've acted upon, but all of which have cost every one of us as taxpayers in the form of higher debt and higher deficits. The president mentioned that Speaker Ryan um, has spoken a lot about poverty and anti-poverty programs. What do you think that uh, Congress can do on that front, if anything? A lot. I mean, the, the platform for wealth creation ultimately is a job. Uh, it's a stable currency, so that which you or I, or again, people across this country save, actually grows, doesn't diminish in value over time. Um, you know, Speaker Ryan was part of a poverty summit back home in my state of South Carolina in Columbia with, you know, Senator Tim Scott and a variety of different presidential candidates this very weekend. So it's something that's being talked about. I think the really important question this year will be what will be done and whether or not Republicans and Democrats can come together on a variety of different anti-poverty measures that range from education to how we, you know, offer welfare payments, I think remains to be seen. With your governor being tapped to give the response, uh, people are talking about her as vice presidential option. What would you think about that? Well, I think, you know, uh, the, the chance to give the, the Republican rebuttal is a, is a great honor. And uh, I think you first got to get a nominee before you have a vice president uh, picked. Uh, so I'll leave that up to the, whoever the next nominee is as to who they're going to pick. But it was a great honor tonight. And who do you like for the nomination? I'm watching. You know, we're going to have a big debate on Thursday in Charleston with uh, sort of the, the contestants, uh, re remaining Republican contestants. I think the elbows will come out in full force because we're, you know, at that time period of the election cycle when we're not that far out from, from votes being cast. And so I, I, I'll be watching and, uh, and, 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 and learning as I watch the debate on Thursday. I haven't selected anybody yet.